Better, better switch your microphone off. Okay. Well. Right. How do I get the big picture? Jeffrey. Hello, welcome to uh, Spanish Wine Week. Oh, sorry, just figuring out the program there a bit. <laughs> welcome to this uh, online event for the trade. Uh, it's um, going to be fantastic. We've got a fantastic lineup. Um, you know, going to gain a lot of knowledge, uh, going to establish commercial contacts with um, boutique wine producers uh, from around Spain and various terroirs and travel around and see some of the incredible wineries and denominations of origin that we, we have here in Spain. So we've got uh, industry experts, masters of wines, sommeliers, uh, experts in their fields to, to talk to you. We've got boutique wine producers from around Spain, from Tenerife to Ribera del Duero, and from the Penedes to Bierfo up in the north of Spain. Um, some, some may be little known uh, denominations of origin uh, for some of you, and for others, probably know more than we do. Um, We've got uh, you, the wine importer. We've got you, the distributor. We've got you, the retailer. We've got you, the agent. We've got you, the journalist. And I'm sure um, during the course of the three-day program, uh, hopefully you're going to have lots of questions that you can throw to us. Now, if you look on your right, of your screen, um, you have a, a chat facility. I see some of you are saying hello already from, from around the world. That's good. That's what it's for. Um, so you, you, you're free to ask a question, uh, any questions you like about the, um, the sessions that we are going to do. Um, you'll have to type them in and uh, we'll keep an eye on them. And uh, re recurring ones, we'll certainly um, pick them out and um, put them to the uh, speakers, wine producers, um, and, and of course, time time permitting. Okay, so do say hello and do uh, ask questions once we get the sessions going. We're also um, going to first of all put you on the in the well, going to put you. The, give you the map of Spain so you can see uh, where all the uh, different denominations of origin are. Incidentally, I've got a quick poll for you here. Um, how many designations of origin are there in Spain? So if you want to have a, a guess now, it's 65, 70 or 75. The answer will be um, given during the presentation that's coming up now. So we're delighted to um, to have uh, Clara uh, with us, who's going to, um, as a top sommelier, uh, is going to take us uh, around some of the de designations of origin of Spain, so that you can, uh, basically the ones that are in the event, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly put them on the map so you can see uh, uh, where they are in, in, in Spain. Right, so let's go to introduce you now to Clara. I can just get her in. There we go. Hi. Hello, Clara. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? Fine. Well, where, where are you? are coming from Girona, aren't you, in the north of Catalonia? Yes, but right. Close fine by sunny. France. Uh, right. Coast. So a fine sunny day, is it? Super sunny day. It's It looks like summertime. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, hand it over to you. Um, the, the fantastic wines of Spain and the, the, the varying terroirs of Spain. Um, uh, Clara Antonia, thank you. Antonia, thank you very much, Anthony, for your work. Not at all. There you go. 
Okay, good morning, everybody. And we are uh, going to talk about uh, terras and different appellations of, of Spain. Spain, it's a huge uh, place to find different wines, but we are going to focus in the appellations that Anthony said that uh, it's placed in this uh, Spanish week wine. And we go ahead with the presentation. First of all, I want to talk a little bit uh, about story. The Phoenicians started the, um, the production 3,000 3, years ago, a long time ago. And it's incredible to, to start in this place and nowadays continuing like that. It's improved for sure by Roman Empire, then Visigoths, and officially provided and to, but tolerated with Muslims. And after the reconquest in 1492, the monks recover the winemaking tradition in Spain. Wait a second, because I have some uh, troubles to pass the... Everybody is watching the presentation? Yeah, I hope so. Okay, now. I have to change the mic. Sorry. Actually, actually, if I could just chip in, when I can't see the presentation. It doesn't. Uh, it's shall I start it and see if um... you can see the the presentation? Okay, now it's fine. Okay, right now, I have a trouble like that. Okay. Well, that uh, after reconquest, as I said, in 1492, the monk recovered the winemaking tradition, but in 19th century arrived phylloxera as everybody knows in to northern europe first of all affects french and then the french producers moved to spain and modernization the production in spain about wine industry later in the first third of 20th century also phylloxera affects spain vineyards and we had also another uh, travel during this time, that is the Spanish Civil War. There were a lot of years that the wine industry uh, lose pro uh, protagonism, lose um, importance, but in during 50s and 60s, recovered and reorganized the, um, the wine industry and started to produce more wine, more in quantity than in quality. And it was in for in seventies, eighties when the quality it will be more uh, improved and, and and focused to to be better. And at the end in the twentieth century and in the beginning in twenty first century, it's the um, the gold time in wine industry in Spain, because there is a new generation of winemakers who have the knowledge that he they learn in the university and common with the learn that he learned with the family and the, uh, the heritage that uh, they have. A Spanish nowadays is the country with the largest area of wine cultivation in Europe and is the third world wine producer after Italy and France. Always with France and Italy, Spain, Spain it's changing the, the first position in different items. And for example, for the wine exports, we are the first one. We are we liderate the exports of wine all over the world. I don't I didn't say that this presentation you will have for you when we finish the this uh, conference and you can review, you can retouch the, the the numbers and everything and not worry about that, okay? Well, for me, the most important thing in Spain, talking about wine, is the Spanish wine diversity. We have almost 4,000 bodegas, wineries, and more than 10,000 different wines. It's a lot, and also it's important because it's different wines, not only red, not only white. We have all of kind of wines in Spain, and in a high quality, most of them. We have also, in the peninsula, different kind of soils. We, 
we will see in each appellation which kind of soils dominate, but in general, we can find uh, clay, we can find a slate, we can find alluvial soils, all kind of soils, soils we can find in, at Spain. And one more important information is that six out of 12 most commonly ground grape varieties in the world have a Spanish origin. It's curious, not a lot of people know that. Airen, Garnacha, Cariñena, Monastrell, Bobal, and Tempranillo, or Tinta Fina, Tinta de Toro, we will see. It's come from Spain. I want to show you some landscape, some images that connecting to the landscape. And you can see on the top, one of the vineyards that we have on the coast connecting to Mediterranean Sea or Atlantic Ocean. Then how we make the regulation of the appellations. We have different levels as a pyramid, like other uh, regions in the world. But Spain, we said denomination of origin, DO, for the top of the pyramid. And then uh, below, there is the PGI wines, that is EG, IGP in, in Spain, that is Indicación Geográfica Protegida. For the O, we have between 67 to 70 appellations, only in Spain. It's a lot, but most of, the, of them are small ones with very local and pre, uh, appreciate characteristics of the, this part. Of. Then for the PGI, we have more or less uh, 40, 41 appellations. Today, we are, we are talking about two of them. OK, here you have a, a map of Spain to take a, a overview before starting to go in. You can see Catalonia, Aragon, Navarra on the north, Euskadi, La Rioja, Cantabria, Asturias, Galis, then Castilla León, Madrid in the middle, going down Castilla-La Mancha, Extremadura, Valencia, Murcia, Andalusia on the south, then Canary Islands. We are talking about uh, with uh, some appellation from these islands. And we have also Balearic Islands. Here you have the Spanish wine map. You can appreciate the appellations, all of them. It's a lot. You can not read the names for sure, uh, but you can review afterwards. Which grapes we work about? The, the most local or the most traditional grapes in Spain. In white, we have Airen, Albariño, Albillo, Garnacha Blanca, Godello, Macabeu, Malvasia, Merseguera, Mol Prensal, Moscatel, Palomino, Parallada, Pedro Ximenez, Picapoll, Trechadura, Verdejo, Charelu. Some of ones, maybe you, you have heard it before. Some of the others, maybe you never heard about it. You can go in and learn a little bit more. For the reds, I put only the traditional, the local, the autochthonous grapes from Spain. You can see Bobal, Callet, Cariñena, Garnacha, Graciano, Mencia, Monastrell, Moristel, Prieto Picudo, Tempranillo, Manto Negro, Fogoneu, Sumol, Trepat. You cannot read Cabernet Sauvignon here, you cannot read Merlot, but we have also Cabernet and Merlot in our appellations. But this one is the main traditional grapes from Spain. Okay? Well, we go in. We are going to start with an appellation that is not very well known. It's a small one and it's um, really recently um, added in appellations of Spain. It's called Deo Cebreros. Cebreros is located in the southeast of Avila prov province in Castile León. And the region is uh, well known as Sierra de Gredos. Sierra means a range of mountains. And you can imagine that a, that is a place that it's uh, in altitude and it's uh, surrounded by, by, with mountains. Rafael Mancebo, 
the current president of the appellations says, where others saw abandoned vineyards, I saw a future, work and opportunities. And it's that. It's an appellation, as I said, it's new, and mainly it's made by uh, young winemakers that wants to work hard and improve and show a different style of red wines made by mainly red grenache. It's the main red, red, red grenache from mountains. And it's so totally, completely different from the uh, red grenache that you know or, or you have tasted. It's um, not full bodied, it's medium bodied or light body, uh, super fresh, fragrant, mineral. It's, it's very curious the red ones from Cebreros. They have uh, 455 uh, hectares uh, under vine. The, the height of the vineyard is from 300 to 1,200 meters above the level of the sea. It's a lot. You can imagine that uh, 1,200, it's uh, some... In winter, there will be snow. It's, it's a hike uh, vineyards. In climate, it's mountainous landscape, as I said, and it's continental. It's a uh, strong winter and not really hard summer for the altitude. In soils, we can find granite, we can find limy and sandy soils mainly. They produce white, they produce rosé, but the most important is, as I said, uh, red wines. Aged in oak, but not really intensive, these barrels. It's uh, less toast and, and more to show the fruity sensations on the, on the garnacha. For the white grapes, they have albillo real, only 10%. It's really, really, really few. And for the red, 80%, 85%, sorry, garnacha, and 5% of tempranillo. Uh, Peter, you said, uh, I, we want to, sh to put the, uh, uh, the answers afterwards, but Peter, I, I can ask you, uh, yes, the, it's a really DO nowadays. It changed a few years ago, before it would be a GPI. Well, we travel to Ribera del Duero. It's within, you, for sure, you, you, you know Ribera del Duero. It's one of the most well-known areas, uh, wine areas in, in Spain. It's within the province of Burgos, Soria, Segovia and Valladolid with relevant municipalities like Pedrosa de Duero, well known, there is a wine that it's called Pedrosa, La Aguilera, Gumiel de Izan, Aranda de Duero, La Horra, Roa, Peñafiel, and Balbuena de Duero. It's mainly, mainly continental climatology, very dry and windy, harsh winters, Super frequent frost is one of the most important pro travel that they have in the vineyard, the frost. And rarely snows. It's super foggy. When you travel with Rivera in winter, it's full of fog. And it's the thing that may could do the, this kind of wines. The grape used in Rivera, it's Tinta del País. It's excellent and very similar to Tempranillo. It's a cousin of Tempranillo. But in Rivera, they called this grape as Tinta del País. 23,000, almost uh, 400 hectares on the vine. Rainfall between 400 to 500 millimeters per year. There is 186 wineries. It's a, it's a uh, medium and, and big region. There is a lot of people making wine and, and wineries. And also some years ago we started a, a revolution. Some young winemakers also accede to, to have vineyards and do uh, new style of red wines in Rivera. The white variety is Alvillo Real, the same in Cebreros. And for the red Tinta del País, Garnacha Tinta, 
as more important and more traditional and they, they have Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec and Merlot. Okay. Next one. You can see that uh, I do a really, uh, a really short presentation of each appellation, but we have a lot and we have to do some, the most important items of each one to have a good overview of Spain, okay? The next one is uh, the nomination of Bierzo. Bierzo is recognized in 1989. It's uh, some uh, years ago, but it's not, uh, it's w more well known last uh, 10 years. Last 10 years is when it started to be more trendy and more well known for everybody here in Spain. Bierzo is in the province of uh, Leon. You can see the, the map. It's combined Mediterranean and Atlantic climatology, smooth temperatures high sun exposition and abundant rainfall. It's one of the difference from Rivera. Here, they have more uh, rainfall than in other regions. Higher lands at 800 meters above the sea with some exfoliated schist. The terroir, the, the soil of the Bierzo, it's, it's very interesting. It's this mixture between clay and these schists. Franco silty, medium acid that could uh, take some great characteristics to, to do uh, wines to, for age. Only 79 wineries, less than in, in Rivera for sure. And here you have two kind of, or two styles of, of wines, white and rosé and red. The rosé could be aged in oak also. It's a characteristic of this area. For the white, you can make the wine by Doña Blanca. I don't know if you heard these grapes uh, uh, before. It's, it's not really uh, uh, known. Doña Blanca, it's characteristic of this Pierzo. Then they have Godello. It's fantastic to make um, whites to age in oak. Then Malvasia, more fruity, more floral, more fresh. And Palomino. Palomino is a neutral and auster uh, grape, but it's uh, really amazing when it's the um, uh, really ancient vineyards. For the red, Bierzo, it's well known to men for Mencia. And also Garnacha. In this case, Garnacha Tintorera. Uh, Bierzo is located in a valley, area under vine 2,853 hectares. The altitude, the height of the vineyard is between 400 to 1,000 meters. And it combines the, the climate between Galician and, and Castilla. It's, it's a mixture. Okay, next one. Rioja. This, for sure, you know, Rioja. And you can see in the name that it's different. It's not only a D-O. D-O-C-A, Rioja. What does this mean, this C-A? means calificada, qualified. This is in the pyramid that I told before. D-O is the top, but there is one step more in the top that it's this qualified appellation. In Spain, we have only two appellations that have this, this, um, this upgrade. That it's one is Rioja and the other one is Priorat. What does it mean, qualified? It means that uh, they have to, to pass more controls, more, there is more restrictions in the appellation. And afterwards, in sometimes highest quality wine also. Area under vine in Rioja, it's 50,000 hectares. For the people that have never been there, you have to imagine that all of the country, all of the place, all of the area, it's full of vineyards. The main industry in Rioja, it's wine. Making wine or wine industry, wine tourism, 
okay? Maximum height of the vineyard is 700 meters above the sea, and the climate is between Atlantic and Mediterranean. We will see in the next slide, it depending on the zone, in the area of the appellation, you can find different climates. Main grapes for white, Biura and Malvasia or Verdejo. And for red, mainly Tempranillo and then some part of Garnacha, Mazuelo and Graciano. The soils we are going to speak in the next and the wine, yeah, mainly red. And the classic um, wine from Rioja is a red aging oak. And it's really uh, evident this barrel in the wine when for the tasting. The soils, it's very different from the areas. In the north, you can find limestone and clay. In the middle, mixed it, uh, blended, it's fairy clay and alluvial and other soils on the, in the south part. It's qualified uh, from since 1991. Climatology and soils determine a division. You can show on the previous, this, no? The north, it's super different from the middle and in the south. And this is the, the one reason that makes this difference. Rioja Alta, Alta is on the north. It's in the middle, sorry. It's continental moderate climate and clayish calcareous soils. Kingdom of Tempranillo. In the super ancient and classic times, it's the kingdom of Tempranillo. Rioja Baja, it's drier, a bit Mediterranean, clay and ferric soils. Give red wines from Garnacha, different, combined by, with Tempranillo, and aromatic and low acidity. And the most, the recent, well-known and, and more trendy in Rioja, it's Rioja La Besa. Rioja La Besa is the is south orientation of vines protected by Sierra Cantabria, calcareous soil, they have short, short summers and mild winters and Tempranillo for young and for age quality wines. Rio Jalavesa extends over little more than 300 square kilometers in the south of the province of Alava on the north bank of Ribera del Ebro. And you can see in this picture, it's the dark red on the picture, is it? on the north, Rio Jalavesa. In my opinion, Rio Jalavesa, as I said, it's, it's a new trendy place of Rioja. And it's because there is a new style of wine, new style of interpretation of the place, of the Rioja. In the wines, you can find more juicy sensations, more connected to the, to the vineyard not connected in the elaboration in the barrel it connects rio jalavesa more the freshness and it's more i said that it's more uh, style for young people or young drinkers rio jalavesa well we travel we have to take a plane and travel to uh canary islands now we travel to tenerife to discover valle de la orotava Valle de la Orotava is an appellation inside Tenerife Island. And it's the, you know that Tenerife is the largest island uh, of Spain. And the vineyards, the characteristic of this uh, Valle de la Orotava, it's how the vines, it's, uh, it's made on the vineyard. It's braid cord. You can see in the photo, it's unique in the world. It's like a, a, a something very artisanal, and it's it's to protect the illnesses. It's to protect the, the fungus of the vineyard. They put this a kind of uh, braided cord. We said cordon trenzado in Spain to protect the vineyard and to expose to the sun to protect the wind. You know that in the island there is a more impact from 
from the wind, from the different uh, fox that's coming uh, from the sea, from the ocean in this case. And it's for that. Area on the vine in Valle de la Orotava, 321 hectares. From 250, since 200, from 200, uh, sorry, 50 meters to 700 meters. The climate in general, it's temperate. You know that it's most close by Africa that, than in Spain. And Sweden by the cold Atlantic current and is that the thing they say before? Sorry. Which grapes they have in Valle de la Orotava? They have in whites, Listan Negro, Listan Blanco, Albillo, Vijariego, Marmajuelo, Torrontes, and Malvasias. I don't know if you have ever heard these kind of grapes. Marmajuelo, Torrontes. It's very, very characteristic from uh, islands, not from the peninsula. And in the reds, we have Lista Negro, Vijariego Negro, and Baboso Negro. For me, there is two main characteristics that differentiate this part, this DO, than the other ones. One is the the kind of the, this cordon trenzado, this braid cord. And then the other thing that it's crucial for the wines, it's the soil, also the grapes, but mainly the soil because they have 70% of volcanic soil. And this um, put in the wine some um, smoked sensations, not coming from the barrel, coming from the soil. It's super amazing to taste these uh, wines from this area. The rest, this 20%, uh, it's clay and remain a 10% of volcanic rock. And the roots have to fight into the volcanic rock. And it's, it's very interesting. In this Valle de Lorotava, dominates white wines more than reds. Okay, next one, Dio Toro. Toro, you know that means bull, and you can say the, the logo, that it's, a, it's wine, but also with a, some bull figure. Area under vine in, in Toro, it's 5,500 hectares. Height of the vineyard, 600 to 700. And 50 meters above the sea level, continental with some Mediterranean influence, but very, very low the Mediterranean influence. It's mainly continental also. For the white grapes, it's Verdejo and Malvasia. And in the red grapes, it's Tinta de Toro. It's similar of Tempranillo, the same case as in Ribera del Duero. But in Toro, they say Tinta de Toro. Tinta means red, red from Toro. It, it, it makes sense, isn't it? The soils in Toro, it's, uh, it's different from the rest. It's mainly sandy texture, poor in organic matter and low in mineral. And the red that comes from this area, it's full body red. The ones that you can chew the wine in a symbolic way, we said that you can chew because it's a very full-bodied, complex, concentrate, and also uh, dense and high uh, level in alcohol, but super fruity also. It's a really well-ripe fruits, red fruits, cherries, strawberries, uh, some something like that. Okay. Next one, Utiel Requena. Utiel Requena is on a high plateau, 70 kilometers inland from coast of Valencia. You can put Valencia on the map and inland of Valencia, you find 
UTL Requena. They have 23, almost 24,000 hectares of vineyards. Not that bad. It's, it's a huge uh, place. And it's divided in among nine towns. Caudete de las Fuentes, Campo Robles, Fuente Robles, Requena, Siete Aguas, Sinarcas, Utiel, Venta del Moro and Villagordo Villa del Cabriel. The hake of the vineyard is 400 uh, to 700 above the sea level. And the climate, it's Mediterranean, mainly Mediterranean, but because uh, due to the altitude, it's some continental influence. You can, if um, Utiel Requena, it were on the plain, it could be impossible to drink the wines because it's, it were uh, too hard. But due to the altitude, the, it could be more fresh and more well balanced. The Mediterranean and, and the, the warm sensations with the, the fresh sensation for, for the altitude. The main grape in this area, it's Bobal. We changed completely the characteristics from Tempranillo, Tinta de Toro, etc. And we discover here in Utiel Requena the Bobal. You have an image, you can see it's very compact uh, grape and with a, with a skin that provides a lot of a lot of anthocyanins, a lot of color, a lot of uh, flavors, and very, very interesting. Also, they have different grapes, a part of Bobal, to blend and to do different uh, style of wines. They have in reds, Tempranillo, Garnacha Tinta, Garnacha Tintorera, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah, Pinot Noir, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc. And for whites, they have Macabeu, Merceguera, Tardana, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Parallada, Verdejo, Moscatel, de grano pet menudo. In Utiel Roquena, it's more or less uh, 60, 70 percent red and the rest for white wines. Okay, we go to the north from Valencia, we travel to Catalonia and in Catalonia we have a curious thing that there is an, there is 11 appellations totally in, in, in the Catalonia area, but we have one that is the, the 12th one, that it's to control all the region, all Catalonia area. It's founded in 1999 and includes 330 municipalities. Also in this um, Hectares of vineyard, it's included the rest of the appellations. And Dio Catalonia includes 30 great varieties. It's a lot for an appellation, but it's because that, it's because it includes all of the Catalonia area. You, you have the list of the, of the grapes. You can see the traditionals for Catalonia for sure, in, uh, uh, bold and the rest it's more international. In Catalonia we can find it's an appellation that is less restrictive. It uh, can include uh, different kind of uh, vinifications, different kind of elaborations and you can find wines from two euros to maybe eight euros. There is a lot of range of prices in Dia Catalunya for that reason, for, because it's different from to, um, all of Catalonia. There were some wineries that have wineries or vineyards in different places in Catalonia. And they, with this uh, DO, they are allowed it to make wine with different area vineyards. Now we go in one of the Catalonia appellation that it's Monsan. Monsan is close by Priorat. It's created in, uh, in 2000. And it's uh, it really no, new compared to other ones. 
And the soils, th three types of soils in Monsan, peripherally, there is compact, mainly calcareous and rolling stones and lime and fluv fluvial terraces. In Falset, that is the main village, it's granitic sands, very fertile, but low capacity to retain water. It's because always it's dry. The sun cannot retain the water. In Cornudella and Falset, it's silicic slate, schist, and a kind of licorella. Licorella is the name, the local name to explain slate or schist. It's a, a dark um, rock, dark stone, and it's interesting for, for this, this area. The climatology is Mediterranean, uh, very hard and also hard winters, but more hard summer than hard winter. 2,000 hectares on the vine, more or less, and 34 winemakers, 34 wineries, few ones. In the grapes, we can find Macabeu, Garnacha Blanca, Muscatell, Parallada, Trobat, Pansal, Chardonnay, for red, Carinena, Garnacha, the most important. Oops, it's something wrong on the. Yeah. Hi, Anthony. Hi, just sorry to interrupt. It's about five more minutes uh, to give time for questions. Just, uh, okay. Okay. I go ahead a lot. <laughs> Okay, I ran a little bit faster to, to arrive at the end. Then, Dio Cava. Cava is an appellation to explain a type of wine. It's for the sparklings. All of Spain can make Cava, but only in the villages that it's, um, it's in, on the law. You can see here that it's uh, 160 municipalities situate, situated in seven aut autochthonous communities. All of these places that can be can make this cava. Today and tomorrow, you will have more conferences about the sparklings in different appellations and different names to explain the same elaboration. For cava, we categorize in two things, depending on the aging and depending on the sugar. For the aging, we have cava, young cava, that is from nine months aging. Reserva from 15 months aging, Grand Reserva for 30 months aging, and last year or two years before, I started the highest quality in Cava that it's called Paraje Calificada, Qualified Landscape. And it's for the Cavas that it's from 36 months aging. Since, does it mean that could be 90 months, for example? in the highest quality. You have the, the main grapes to make uh, cava, Macabeu Cherelu Parallada, and for white, and Garnacha Trapat for the reds. Depending on the sugar you have from Brut Nature to Dulce, sweet, different uh, grams of sugar for each one. I go faster to, to arrive at the end, and then you can ask everything. The Ocustes del Segre, this is in Lérida, this is inland in Catalonia, close by Aragon, continental, continental super continental, uh, 18 wine grower, wineries only, 18. And the, the main grapes is Macabeu Parallà de Xarelo, Garnatxa for whites, and Garnatxa Negra, Ull de Llebre, Monestrell, Samsó Carinyana i Trapat for the reds. OK, next one also in Catalunya, Conca de Barberà, in the province of between Lleida and Tarragona. Uh, Vinyard is the river valleys of Francolí and Anguera. Mediterranean with uh, continental influence, 21 wineries, 3,500 hectares. And one of the most important thing in this um, appellation is the, it's called 
the operation of the cathedrals of wine. You can see two photos of the buildings. It's an ancient buildings, historical buildings, very well known. And the history is the thing that connect with the style of wines. Very traditional, very um, respectful for the, for the origin, for the grape, but also for the history of the place. Next one, it's Panades, well known. We have three different areas, sorry. Low Panades, Mid Panades, and High Panades. It's depending on the place that it's located, but related to the, the height. Two types of soil in Panades, inland with a smooth relief, a few hills and flat coastline, quite sandy and clayish, permeable and good retention of water, low fertility, the climatology Mediterranean mainly, but very heterogeneous in depending on the hike and in the um, orientating orientation of the vineyard, if it's to the sea or if, if it's to inland. Okay. 193 wineries, almost 28 hectares of vineyard, not that bad. Okay, we are going to the bottom. Uh, we arrived to the Indicación Geográfica Protegida. We have two, Bajo Aragón and Tierra de Castilla. And as I said, it's a good quality wines, fantastic and amazing wines, but it's um, the people decided not to go in uh, appellation as a classical one. It's less category, but not in, in quality. Uh, area under vine in Bajo Aragón, 4,500 uh, hectares, between 200 to 600 meters above the sea level. Climate, um, scarce precipitation, not exceed 300 liters per year. It's not a lot. And it's uh, limestone soils and sandy soils, rich in minerals. This is the one of the characteristic rich minerals and concentrate a lot the grapes. They have Chardonnay, they have Garnacha Blanca and Macabeu. And for the red, they have autochthonous grapes. One is the Rechero. It's, it's very few uh, hectares, but very interesting to taste and to discover. Then Garnacha, Mazuela, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah and Tempranillo. This area is well known more for different products. For example, Calanda peach, maybe you heard that, or uh, pork ham. And the last one, it's uh, IGP Tierra de Castilla in Castilla-La Mancha, and it's the great wine region. Some experts have called the seller of Europe because Castilla-La Mancha is the area of Europe that have more uh, vineyard per capita. Hake of the vineyard is 200, from 200 to 700 above the sea level. It's continental, mostly red clay. It's one of the characteristics of this place. And for there is a lot of white grapes and red grapes. It's similar in appellation of Catalonia. That includes a lot of things. And it's, um, it's an area that make wine mainly blended, not uh, monovarietal and interesting to taste. There is some jewels uh, in Tierra de Castilla. You could discover some jewels during this uh, Spanish wine week. Okay. I propose you some Spanish wine pairing, but we can go ahead and yeah. Okay. Okay, yes, great. Thank you very much. I, I started to run to finish. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I think, uh, we're gonna visit all these destinations of origin because all of them have wineries uh, represented in the yeah. Three day event. So I'm sure, we're, in fact, we've got some live interviews. Know more. With, um, tenor, tenor, Valle del Oro, Oro Tava. Uh -huh. That's the right pronunciation. Valle del Oro Tava. Mm -hmm. To name one. And looking at the questions here, there's uh, one from Peter. 
uh, insinuating maybe that the Dio Catalunya was set up for Torres. What's your view on that? What is my opinion about Dio Catalunya? Yes, I mean, what was it set up to, for, to accommodate Torres or, or is it... Um, it's the thing that I said, eh? you can find uh, amazing wines and you can find a, a basic ones. It depending on the products and it's created, it's created to protect in a, in a Dio category all the wines that could be made in Catalonia. There is some sellers that have sellers in Barcelona, in Lerida, and they want to make a wine with, uh, with grapes from the two areas. And it's the only way to do it. And I started this appellation to provide category in the wines that it's made in the all of the area of Catalonia. I don't know if I, I answered the... Well, I don't, I don't know, maybe Peter can uh, chip in. So, so is it fair to say that the old Catalina was set up to... Um, uh, Cover another not so good wine, or, or, or are we getting quality wines out of the, the first impression for people could be that, but I repeat, there is some amazing wines in Appellation of Catalonia. Actually, in Canary Islands, uh, exists an appellation like that. It's Dio Canary Islands. It's the same model of our elaborations. They can mix and blend uh, different grapes from different islands for protecting that. Also started uh, Appellation of Catalonia to, for the export, actually. If the winemakers want to export, it will be easier if they, they are under an appellation, that if not, an appellation of Catalonia, it's easier to 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 put to put on the map Catalonia than Alella, for example. Okay, and are there any more questions there? Dio Catalonia must all grapes be from DOP areas. I'll bait several separate areas. I'm not quite sure what it means, but uh, um, the grapes that could be made in Appellation of Catalonia could uh, come from, from all of the areas of Catalonia? It's that or, or I don't know if I understand the, the question. Right. I just think I need earphones and a microphone. <laughs> so Jesus means he he like hell. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. something called Jesus, right. Okay. Um, Right. Well, do we have any more questions? Uh, uh, so I think the um, the Pinot Noir could be used uh, for rosé cava was answered by somebody yeah. else in the, in the chat. Mm -hmm. so it's taken care of. Um, what more? Torontes. Is Dio Catalunya like Vino de la Tierra? No. It's higher. It's higher. It's it's in Dio. It's it's like an, an um, another Dio. I I know that it's different. It's difficult to understand. It's difficult to explain. But it's the same category as as Dio, Catalonia. It's also, for example, there is a case that it's very clear in Empordà area. We have Dio Empordà where I lived in the north part of Catalonia, uh, close by France. And there is a cellar that it's close to Gon, that they make a, a white wine with uh, some grapes that it's not accepted in the local appellation, in the Dio Empordà. And they put this white wine in Dio Catalunya because they export a lot and they need some Dio to, to, to be um, a stronger for the export. But this white is one of the best whites in Spain. And you have to spend 60 euros per bottle. It's, it's not a, a bad wine. But it's the reason why where the, the vines it's planted, this a small area doesn't accept these uh, varieties, you know? OK. Uh, I, I said something at the beginning about a poll. 
realized it wasn't actually published, but here it is. How many designations of origin are there in Spain? It's the answer 65, 70, or 75. Mm -hmm. Go to now, please. Mm -hmm. They can review now the presentations or afterwards? So, uh, as soon as the software permits, we will get the, um, uh, the video recording and that will be um, published. Um, on the winepleasures.com website. The, uh, I see most people are getting the right answer. The answer is, uh, Clara? It's uh, 70. 70, so well done, those who got it right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Clara. That was uh, very informative and uh, sets the stage for all things to come, uh, all the designations origin that are going to be represented in this uh, trade fair uh, uh, you have um, you've mentioned so we're we're kind of um, set now for the live interviews that are coming up at um, 3 15 I'm going to put up at the top here a sticky message so that you can uh, when when we close this um, session uh, you have to uh, click on the link it should be seeing at the top uh, to um, access the next um, webinar, which will be live interviews, three producers. Um, we have one from the Valle de la Orotada, from the Tierra de Castilla, and uh, one representing Cava and C Catalonia. So maybe we can ask. Uh, you can ask Cava again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everybody, and I hope that you 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 are continuing enjoying the the day. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll we'll end there, and uh, we'll see you in the next chat room. I'm just going to cross over town and uh, get ready for the next seminar, which begins at quarter past three. Live interviews with wine producers, boutique wine producers from around Spain. See you there. Thank you very much.